Hello there, everyone. Welcome back. So I noticed recently that it's been quite a long time since I did a helmet setup video. Uh, I think the last one I did was back in 2021 from memory. I don't know. I'll have to double check that. But since then, a lot of stuff has changed. The way how we record the content, the way I record the audio as well has totally changed. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do a bit of an update video on how my helmet setup is today and basically what improvements I have made over the last 12 months or so. So yeah, let's jump right in. So the very first thing that I think we should talk about obviously is the POV of the riding, which is the GoPro. So the GoPro here that I'm using is a GoPro Hero 10 Black. I'm shooting at 4K, 4K 60. Yeah, I've, I've said this before about why I like to use 4K 60 or 60 FPS. It's mainly just because everything's in motion. As we are riding along, everything just looks a lot smoother at 60 FPS. And the GoPro Hero 10 Black is next to the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Is there a 12 Black yet? I don't even know. But this is one of the only cameras that can shoot 4K 60. So that's one of the main reasons behind getting this camera. The secondary camera that we use uh, on our face, on our face, uh, that we use to face us, that to face me, is a GoPro Hero 9 Black. And that is shooting at 2.7K 60 FPS as well. So, I mean, in terms of everything else, the helmet setup is actually pretty much the same. The mounting mechanism is the same here. We'll, we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. So I've got another, another camera set up right here, so hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better. But we've got a kind of an adhesive mount here. Now, this mount is the same mount that I've used ever since I started this channel. Uh, it uses a sticky pad, one of the, the GoPro adhesive pads. Now, I, I think I've shared this story before, but the adhesive pad that I originally used, and I was using a GoPro Hero 7 Black at the time, uh, it failed on me. I just used that, stuck it on, and unfortunately it failed on the motorway, and yeah, I never saw that GoPro again. So that was 200 quid thrown down the drain. But I learned my lesson. Uh, so now actually what I do is I will st stick on the sticky pad on the helmet just as is, but then on the other side, I will actually apply some super glue, super glue. And then I will press the, the mount down with some wood clamps or something like that, whatever, whatever I've got available. I'll clamp it down and I'll let it set for 24 hours. And ever since then, I have not had any problems with this one. And it's the same with the wifey's one as well. The wifey's helmet hasn't failed either. And I did the exact same thing with hers. And um, these GoPros aren't lightweight anymore. These are some quite chunky boys uh, nowadays. So I'm glad that the old setup that I had with my Hero 7 Black still works with the new bigger and heavier GoPros. So yeah, I mean, because this helmet is a bit of a odd helmet because the the face cover, the, the visor actually goes down in front here, in front of the mouthpiece. So most helmets don't do that. They the, the visor comes down to kind of like where the nose is. This one comes down all, all the way to the chin. So I couldn't mount this GoPro the way how most motor vloggers do, where they just have a sticky pad that goes on the front of basically where the chin guard is. They have it on the front there and they use like silicone or something like that to actually stick it on. But no, with me, I wasn't able to do that, which is why I have it set up the way I do. So it's mounted on the side and it basically is just, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a rig, you know. Uh, it's just multiple different pieces just to kind of get enough space that the visor can shut properly but also that, it, that the camera is as close to the helmet as possible because that's how you get the widest field of view with these GoPros. So yeah, that's basically how I've got it set up right now. And until I actually change my helmet, uh, this is probably gonna be the way how it stays. I am thinking of taking this off. The way to take this off is by using some alcohol, some isopropyl alcohol, you can just drip that around the glue and it should soften it, uh, dissolve it, and then that should let this go. and then. Maybe I might redo it again, just in case the adhesive is on its way out. But no, it, it seems to be holding firm, at least for now. So the biggest change, I think, 
in terms of our quality is actually in the, in, in the sense of how we record our audio. Now, I've actually been through a number of different audio recorders. This one is one of the best ones that I've found a reasonable price. This cost me, I think it was a hundred pounds, but I did buy this used. So brand new, I don't know, you're probably looking 120, 130 quid, something like that on Amazon. Um, and I mean, yes, it does quite well. It records at, uh, it records a WAV format. I uh, can't remember the exact bit rate. In fact, actually, let's turn this on and find out. But the main reason why I got one of these is because it actually allows you to adjust the audio input manually, which it's, it's a real help when you when you want to try and limit as much of that wind noise as possible. So this is wave 24 bit sample rate 96k stereo. Now I, I, it's funny that I've got it set to stereo, but actually I shouldn't because the main star of the show isn't actually the audio recorder. By the, by the way, this is a Tascam uh, DR07X. That's what that one is. But that now. My ignorance, I thought that this was the main thing that I would need to get better audio quality, but actually that's not the case. The microphone is actually by far the most important factor. And I've been working on this video for a little while, the, the best way to get, or the best equipment to get you started with recording audio when you're moto vlogging. And what I've found, because I actually did some testing with all the previous equipment that I've had over time, I've actually found that it's the microphone that makes the most difference. So this here is a Sennheiser ME2. And all that this is, is literally just, I'm going to take this off. It's just the mic, just the bare mic. There's no anything else on there. There's, you know, the little, like, little plastic rubber uh, wind muffler that normally comes with lapel mics. I don't have any of that. I just stick on this dead cat and basically you're off to the races. Uh, one of these dead cats is actually more than enough. You do see some moto vloggers kind of using a load of dead cat, but actually if you use a really good microphone that has quite a, um, what's the word? I'm trying to, trying to remember what the word is. I might have to have a look at it here. Uh, but there's a specific metric which measures how how loud this is actually able to record before it starts clipping. And with this microphone, it's 120 decibels. So I'm actually able to capture everything that I'm saying and also limit as much of that wind noise as possible. Because that's, that's the one thing that you don't want when you're doing this. You might have the microphone, a, a microphone that can sh that can record at, I don't know, 110 decibels max, something like that you may actually find that when you come to edit it, that it still sounds really crackly because it's overtaking what you're saying. And, um, but luckily with this, with this microphone and with this audio recorder, I haven't had that problem. One thing that I will say about this audio recorder is it does have a, a limiter function. So if it does start clipping, it'll automatically turn the gain down, I believe. I'm not, I'm not an audio expert by any means, so if you know more about audio than I do, then let me know what, what I'm talking about down in the comment section below. But anyway, it does limit the amount of input that it receives, but it's not actually that great at doing that. So I actually limit, limit it myself manually. There isn't a metric or something like that that, that you can set, at least I don't think you can at least it, it doesn't show any kind of metrics or what have you, but it has a level. I think it goes from, I don't know, like 60 being the loudest or 80 being the loudest or picking up the most audio to zero picking up next to nothing. But surprisingly enough, even at zero, it still picks up pretty much everything when you're out on a ride. Uh, I, I tend to leave it around about level 20. That seems to be the best kind of what's the word the best balance between capturing as much as possible but focusing mainly on what is being captured at the end of the microphone the one annoying thing that i have found with the Tascam is that when you hit the record button it doesn't record you have to hit it twice if you hit the record button once then basically you are relying on the Tascam to record audio as and when it hears it 
Now I had to learn this the hard way because I went out on a couple of shoots and it, it didn't pick up hardly anything that I wanted it to. Uh, and then I realized that you've got to press the record button twice in order to record everything basically. But I mean, other things that have changed. So over before, before this, before buying this Tascam, I was using the mic adapter for the GoPro. This mount here, you may have noticed, has a little hole here. If I move this mini ZZR over, this actually has a hole here, which is designed for the mic adapter. Now, this is the old mic adapter, the one that you'd plug in to an old Hero 7 Black, Hero 6 Black. Uh, they now have like a mod mic setup thingy that I've seen people using on these newer GoPros. Uh, but the old the old one works just as well as long as it's on a type C as it has a type C connector then you're actually good to go but the biggest issue that I found with it was that it recorded audio really well considering it was just going through the GoPro it recorded it absolutely perfectly but I don't know if it's some kind of wear and tear but basically the audio recorder I wouldn't know if it was working or not there were some shoots that I'd go out and it actually wasn't recording any audio whatsoever so all you'd hear is just that, psh, that wind noise and it would be absolutely awful and then but I wouldn't realize until I got home so I'd shoot a whole video and it's only in the editing stage is when I realized that the GoPro hadn't picked up any of the audio through the microphone and unfortunately when you plug in the mic adapter I don't know if this is the same with the mod mic but it doesn't notify you that it's plugged into a mic adapter. There's, there's no way to know. So you're kind of like just relying on gut instinct that the GoPro is actually picking up the audio from the microphone and not the internal microphone. So, I mean, that's perhaps the biggest, the biggest change that we've done over the last six months is this, uh, well, this. Now, in terms of cost, I will leave everything down in the video description for you to have a look if you want to. Um, but this microphone here isn't cheap. Uh, this cost me a hundred pounds, brand new, I think. Let me check here. Yeah, about a about hundred pound brand new. You can get some used around about half that price between 50 and 75 pounds. But these are not cheap microphones by any means. Um, I mean, you know, for, for, for what for what I need it for, for what I use it for, it's actually perfect. I did have the old microphone that I used was a Rode SmartLav, I think it was. It wasn't, it, it was, I think, was it the SmartLav Go? I can't remember, but uh, that was a pretty good microphone as well, e uh, even though it was about half the price of one of these. But... It could record up to, I think it was 110 decibels, maybe 100 decibels. So every now and then, if I was going over, say, 70 miles an hour, which to be fair, I don't do all that much, but if I am going over 70 miles an hour, then that microphone really struggled and just get all that crackly, horrible noise. Whereas with this, I could probably go over 100 miles an hour and it would still pick up my voice perfectly clear. You'll still have some wind noise, but with that dead cat on it, you're going to be all right. So... I mean, that's pretty much it, I think, in terms of my 2023 helmet setup. I mean, right now, if anything's going to change, it's more than likely going to be the helmet itself, if I'm going to change anything. But this mic, I, I bought this about two or three months ago. In fact, it might have been just before Christmas, because that's when I was looking at doing that, that whole video around the best kind of mic setup for moto vlogging which I, I do intend to finish off in the near future. Uh, I need to go through the footage, analyze it all. It's, it's just a bit of a, a ball ache, actually, trying to process all of it because the idea of that video is the best bang for buck. So should you spend £100 on something like this or should you actually spend more like £30 on, say, a Sony audio recorder and pair it with a more expensive microphone? And uh, I think that's probably where... The, the conclusion is going to lie in that video, at least from what I've seen so far. But there are benefits to having something like this as well, which hopefully we can touch on in that video. But yeah, so I mean, if you want to get close to the kind of recording quality that we have 
uh, on our channel when we're doing our motor vlogs, then this is the setup that you need pretty much. You don't have to have the secondary camera. You don't have to have any of the cameras that we've got set up around here. You don't have to have any of that. And, I, and that's how I started off. I just started off with a GoPro and an audio recorder. And basically that was it. But you do, unfortunately, with some of these things, like with the microphone, in order to get the best audio quality or as good as you can get, you will have to fork out for decent audio equipment. Unfortunately, a 15 pound lapel mic from Amazon, non-branded, isn't actually gonna work all that well in this use case. For, I don't know, use cases where you are just chatting to someone or we're doing like this kind of video where there's no wind, we're indoors and what have you, then those microphones may work okay. But yeah, for, for our use case for moto vlogging, you're gonna want something like that. Uh, in terms of camera, I mean, we have had the Insta360 One X2 feature on our channel over the last six months, but I mean, I've stopped using that because the 360 function is just, it's more of a hassle than it's worth. So, I mean, yeah, I've, I've done a video, a whole video about why I've stopped using the Insta360 One X2. I'll leave that up in the top corner or in the video description for you to watch afterwards, just in case you're looking at getting one of those cameras. But for this use case, the just a GoPro works absolutely fine. You can, you can get away with a GoPro Hero 8 Black uh, or a Hero 9 Black, but you will not be able to get 4K 60. You'll have to settle for either 1080p 60 or 2.7k 60. I think that's where the GoPro Hero 7 Black maxed out, I think was at 2.7k 60. So you could even go far as far back as a, as a Hero 7 Black, but they're not being made anymore. I don't think the Hero 8 Black's being made anymore. So you may only be able to find a Hero 9 Black and they're going for around about 300 quid or so, which is actually not a bad price considering these are going for about 400 pounds. Uh, per unit and the Hero 11 Black is going for even more than that and you're not getting that much more extra really. The stabilization between all of them is actually pretty damn good. I do have, I mean, on, on the Hero 10 Black you get this enhanced stabilization feature but the problem with it is that it crops the image too much. So I just use the basic uh, whatever they call it, hyper smooth, just the basic one. I don't use the hyper smooth extra or super, whatever they call it. I can't remember what, what it's called. I don't use that because it simply crops it far too much and you can hardly see what's going on around you. The whole point of having a GoPro is because you've got that wide angle lens and you can see as much as possible, you know? So you could look at a DJI camera. They have been coming leaps and bounds over the last few years. I may look at a DJI camera a DJI, DJI uh, action camera in the near future instead of going GoPro because I've, I've heard a lot of good things. I mean, you guys know me, uh, when it comes to the shoots and things, the, the main thing I want is reliability. And to be fair, I haven't had too many issues with the Hero 10 Black apart from the whole whether or not it's going to record through the audio adapter or not. Um, I haven't had too many problems with the camera crashing on me or anything like that. I did have quite a few with the Hero 7 Black, but not with this one, and nor with the Hero 9 Black. As long as you're using the right SD card, use a V30 SD card, and you should be absolutely fine. I mean, just for reference, the cards that I'm using are V30 128 gig, so they're not the biggest things in the world, I think, nowadays as well. You can get them on Amazon for around about 30 quid or less. So, yeah. Definitely just make sure it has a little V30 logo on the card itself and you'll be absolutely fine, I think. Just make sure as well that you format those SD cards every once in a while. I, I, I try to format them basically once a week, but at most once a month. I don't know. I don't know why it happens on GoPros. On the Insta360, I've never had to reformat that card. It has just worked, but... I suppose it just depends on the software and how good it works with the SD card that you have inside the camera that you're using. But anyway, I think that is pretty much everything. I, I There's nothing else really. I'm still using the same Canon M50 to take the Instagrams. Uh, I'm still using the same old Panasonic Lumix camera for our live shows. That's the one that's recording over there. So pretty much everything else is stayed the same, but the main the main differences are the audio recorder, the microphone, and well, the GoPro itself. 
But yeah, like I said, I don't think I'm going to invest in another GoPro anytime soon. I'm actually going to look at a DJI camera instead. Is it the Osmos? The Osmos or Action Action 2, something like that. I don't know. Or maybe the Action 3. I don't know which one's out uh, these days. Um, I'm going to stay away from Insta360 for the time being. They make some pretty good pieces of kit, pretty reliable pieces of kit. But I actually, I don't like the quality that you get at the finished picture. So I, d I think that's one of the things that I didn't mention actually in that Insta360 video is the fact that if you are, because you have the option of shooting with a single lens or a 360. Now you, you'd think, well, okay, if you don't like the 360 function, then that's great. You can just shoot with the single lens function. Yes, but unfortunately the capture quality is nowhere near as good as the GoPro, even at the same resolution. So it shoots maximum, I think it's 1440p, I think it's 60 FPS from memory from a single lens and even though the gopro can do the same thing it still looks sharper and better on a gopro so that's why i i i've almost pretty much given up using the insta 360 entirely but anyway thank you so much for watching this little kind of i don't know just just a little kind of vlog on the equipment that we are using and i mean i, I don't i don't mean to kind of I don't know, be big headed or anything like that. But out of all of the moto vlogging genre content creators that I subscribe to, this audio setup is better. The camera, uh, I mean, the, the camera setup, it, it, that's kind of more, you could be a bit more picky and a bit more choosy with that because a lot of content creators out there that do moto vlogging, they shoot at 30 FPS and I refuse to shoot at 30 FPS. Um, so you have, you have a bit more choice around that because most of the cameras, they can shoot at 60 FPS. It just depends on how much resolution you want. You can either have more resolution and less frame rate or more frame rate and less resolution. Uh, did I say that right? Less frame rate, more resolution, less resolution, more frame rate. There you go. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the, 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 main, the main thing, the, uh, the main achievement I think that we have done over the last year is get our audio quality just... Yeah, seriously, this this audio setup here is wonderful. And considering it is very entry level, uh, there are channels out there with a lot more, uh, a load more resources than us. And we've been able to find a really, really good setup. And I like to take pride in recording audio as well as we can. That's an achievement. Every single time whenever someone watches one of our videos, the first thing they say is, Wow, how do you get such good audio quality? Well, there you go. So there's Tascam DR07X and the Sennheiser ME2. At least that's what we are currently using. But yeah, the main metric that you want to look out for is that decibel metric. Make sure that on the spec sheet, it can do 120 decibels, 130 decibels, something like that. And yeah, you should be absolutely fine. But anyway, yeah, thanks again ever so much for tuning in to this video. And I hope this helped you out, especially if you are either looking to do some moto vlogging yourself or if you're just looking to capture some memories whilst you are out on rides. I mean, that's one of the biggest motivators for me doing this is I when when I stop riding these kinds of bikes, I will still have all of these memories in video form. And that's absolutely wonderful. The fact that I'm able to re-experience these these bikes again i think it's just absolutely wonderful so if you are a motorcycle rider and you just want to i don't know you, you might get to a point in your life where you can't ride anymore or something like that or circumstances change well maybe you might want to capture a little bit of it to remind yourself of what it was like so yeah i definitely recommend this setup again you could, if, if you if you don't care about recording audio through your mic then well you can get rid of this you don't need that uh, and you're, you're off to the races. So, yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope this helped you out anyway, guys and gals. And, uh, yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below if uh, you have any of this kind of equipment and how you feel about it and whether or not there's anything here that actually I could improve on. If there's a, a better mic out there that I could look at getting, then definitely let me know down in the comment section below or a better camera. I'm always open to options when it comes to this stuff. I mean, all this is self-discovery. This is trial and error. And uh, I'm just doing this video out of the goodness of my own heart. Um, you know, because it, it, people don't need to make the same mistakes twice. 
you know, or the same mistakes over and over again just because they don't know what they're buying. Well, this stuff, if you want a really good setup, this is all you need right here. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Again, I'll leave everything that I've mentioned in today's video down in the comments, uh, in the uh, video description down below. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, leave a like, hit subscribe. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.